I'm about to graduate from high school and I want to be an electrician. What should I do? Canada edition. All right. <laughs> I'm actually not from Canada. I don't know anything about Canada. I do know a little bit about Canadian electrician, electricianry, electricianism. So here's what I got. I got a question from Case Craw, Crowshaw. Casey, maybe C A I S E. Is that Casey? Like with a funny spelling. Casey says, Hey, I've been watching your videos. I'm 17 years old from Canada and I'm almost done with high school and I'm really interested in being an electrician, but I have no clue what to do. Uh, once I'm done high school, should I start applying to different places and then go to college for my apprenticeship? And I really struggle with math and wondering if there's a lot of math involved or if I should not worry and still try anyways. I just wanted to see if I'm overthinking it and what I should look out for when applying. All right, so Case or Casey, whatever your name is, Case, it might even be Case or Calls, Cause, sorry. It's late, I'm tired. All right, so uh, in Canada, the really the only huge difference with Canadian electrical and the US is that we have different codes. So up there they have a Canadian electrical code. Uh, we have national electrical code. Um, so the national electrical code is US only, Canadian electrical code can, is, the, is Canadian. Very similar in a lot of ways, like safety wise and kind of how things need to be done, pretty similar, um, but you couldn't just grab a national electrical code book and then do work to the Canadian code because the inspectors and building officials, everybody uses a specific code and their codes say things must be done this way and done this, you know, this certain way, these certain materials have to be used in these environments. And if you do something to the national electrical code for the US in Canada, it's not gonna fly and vice versa. So it being an electrician's very similar. Um, you still have the apprenticeship that you have to go through. It might be different. There might be five terms of it where usually here in the US we have four terms you know four years or 8,000 hours you might have five years 9,000 10,000 hours somewhere around there again there's there's so much Canada uh, there's so many different things some places in Canada require you to go through a trade school um, or some kind of schooling to be able to be an electrician to even get into your apprenticeship but a lot of places don't and it's the same thing with here in the US. There's some places you can literally just call everybody on Google, when you Google best electrician in Austin and see what the results are that come up and just go, uh, you know, and go through every company. I usually go by reviews, whoever's got the best reviews, that's who I wanna work for. I don't wanna work for a crappy company. And if they don't have any reviews, it's probably like a word of mouth type of thing where they don't even care about reviews or anything like that. So um, I just usually go off of people that are like really marketing themselves, really pushing to be the best, want to be known as the best, have lots of great reviews. And I just start calling all of them. I'm like, yo, I just graduated high school, um, want to start an apprenticeship. Um, I hear this guy Dustin in the US says it's like the coolest thing, so I want to try it. Um, and that's how you get started. Now there also is the IBEW, the, the union. You can go through the electrical union to uh, get training. A lot of times they'll have like a wait list depending on how big the city is like here in New York City and LA and stuff like that. Like there's a long waiting list. You could be waiting for years just for a slot to be able to get in. Um, with the union, you'll have to do some kind of an aptitude test. A lot of it's just general mechanical knowledge if you know how things turn and work and how measurements work and stuff like that. It's kind of just generally to see where you stack up with other people about like, can you understand mechanical things naturally? Um, and so you're tested on all of that stuff based on aptitude and that aptitude is what generally decides whether or not you get into the program. With non-union or merit shops, uh, it doesn't operate that way. So like people can just start and then whoever wants to get trained can get trained. Um, usually with merit shops, they call them merit shops because your pay is a lot more flexible. You can get paid more, um, less. It's kind of all over the board when you get raises kind of up to you and your boss. And you know, like there's just a lot of room for um, a gradation of pay. With the union, not so much. The union's a lot more like rigid structured. They've got kind of pay scales that people for certain amount of time and experience and everything get to accumulate. So if you like the more like rigid structure of having 
your health care and, and benefits and all of these things paid for you and you get an entire package and they provide training and do everything for you. A lot of people love that and I think it's really great. It's a very thorough way to train somebody. Going with the union is a good idea. If you're in a place that's kind of small and there's not a union presence, or even if you're in a big place that just doesn't have a union presence, then you don't really have a choice to go union or not. Um, you can just go non-union. But either way, if you're in a place that's heavily unionized, uh, you can still work for non-union shops. They just do different kinds of work. You know, a lot of, here in Austin, like we have a really small union. There's not very many people I run into that are union electricians, just because there's not that many shops. There's probably like this many union shops and like this many non-union, you know what I mean? So like generally most people just go non-union, but the unions usually get all the work with like the government buildings. Anytime some new courthouse has to be built or something like massive hospitals or huge entertainment venues, convention centers, stuff like that. So they do a lot of that kind of work, whereas the non-union shops do everything else. Um, and that's not even saying that unions only get to do those exclusively. Uh, it's bid out to whoever, but a lot of times there's contracts and handshaking and stuff and they make sure that union is represented because they've lobbied and made deals with rich people to in the political structure to make that happen. So that's the, the big difference as far as like getting into one or the other and which path that you go. If you don't have to go through a trade school, I highly recommend that you don't go through a trade school just because most trade schools are for-profit businesses. They're not a school per se. They're not like trying to get you to graduate because there's a job that you have a necessity, you have to have a piece of paper in order to get that job. Most places you don't have to have any paper. Like a lot of places in Canada too, you don't even have to have a GED or diploma in the US too. Because of the merit nature of like non-union shops, they can hire whoever they want. You can hire people out of prison, like you can hire anybody that you want essentially. It's just kind of up to the owner for that. They might run into problems on licensing because the state may not license them for certain reasons, certain kinds of convictions um, and stuff like that. Um, but generally like if you go to a trade school, you're not gonna get anything out of it that you can take with you to a job that's gonna benefit you any more than the dude that just woke up with messy hair and showed up and sat in the seat and you guys are interviewing together and you're on the same exact level. It doesn't matter what schooling you do because the problem with most schools is they don't actually give you experience and most companies hire from experience. Most companies don't care what you learned on a chalkboard somewhere and learn some like mathy maths. Like we don't care. We want to know when you put these tools on your belt, what are you gonna be able to do with them? Are you gonna make me money or no? Nah? Like how much should I pay you? Have you done anything like this before? Do you know how to use tools or have you literally just hopped out of only ever having a corporate environment and you still have clean fingernails and clean hands and they're soft? <laughs> you know, like we, we want to know what are you gonna do when I put tools on you? Like that matters so much more because that's all we care about. Um, we don't necessarily care about the schooling. Schooling's cool, but I think people that get some experience first and then add schooling to their repertoire, repertoire, <laughs> repertoire, repertoire uh, raptors. <laughs> Sorry. People that add schooling on top of an already like basic foundation of knowledge and experience are gonna know what that schooling's even about. It's gonna make sense to them. People that go sit in a school in a classroom somewhere and try to learn something while never actually going out to the field to try any of it really aren't gonna have any clue how to correlate the two. They're learning about codes and stuff, but they don't even know how to install materials. There are some schools out there that are good schools that have a lot of material spend, that they spend huge budgets buying up wire and panels and having things donated so that they do get a chance to like work on stuff. And if you ever get to go to a school like that, then that's awesome because that actually gives you real world experience. It doesn't matter if you're getting a certificate or anything like that because you can actually go apply and be like, yeah, I know that's a 1900 box or that's, you know, like a four square box or I know that that's a fan brace and it's fan rated so it can hang a fan. Like you start learning stuff because you're actually using things and that is what's most useful. Experience is always the best, most important thing in the trades. Schooling is like, I don't know, if you wanna be extra and you like have more code knowledge. But again, we don't, you don't understand the code book. You can't read through one of these code books cover to cover and understand anything. <laughs> you have no idea. It's worded so crazily 
that a lot of the words that are used in it, we don't actually use in the field. So you're reading something that has no basis in understanding it. So again, being out in the field, then you can identify what all of these books are even talking about. You can think from your knowledge base, like, oh, I've tested this thing before. I saw this thing blow up. I saw a breaker trip and all of that. So like now, I can understand what codes are doing and why they're there because I know what they're even talking about. So that's just my preference. If you're gonna go to school, I would make sure that you're gonna go to a school that like at least the hours that you're going to school count towards you getting your license. So there's some accreditation that you might have to guarantee that a, a school has for them to give you that. If you have to go pay $20,000, here's the thing, to apprentice, you get paid to learn. You get paid to make mistakes. You don't have to pay anything. A lot of companies will even buy your tools for you. So for you to go pay a school, which is not necessary, you can still get into the job, but you're gonna pay a school $10,000, $20,000. If they don't give you hours that that counts for so that you can take it to a company, and I'm talking like 2,000 hours minimum, not like 400 hours, because that's stupid, that doesn't even matter. Uh, but if they don't give you something like that, that either makes it so that you get your license faster or gets you a ton of experience using tools so that you can get a job easier, then it is a waste of all of your money. And you're just being ripped off by a company, not a school. They call themselves a school, it's still a business. And that's the thing, on their website, they're like, to be an electrician, come to our school and we will give you the XYZ ABC certificate so that you can be an electrician. What they don't tell you is it's not necessary because they're a business, they're trying to market a product and a service to you so that when you're Googling and you don't know any better, you go and buy the thing and it doesn't matter because we won't hire off of that anyways. So that's my rant, I've said that rant, I don't know how many times, enough of it. Love you crazy people, hope that helped you. Kane, not Kane, K Cairo, Case, Casey, Kais, <laughs> whatever your name is, dude. I uh, hope that helped. Um, and good luck with everything, dude. Congrats on getting out of high school. See you guys in the next one.